Hey, web slingers. I don't discuss Spider-Man too often because I started doing uh, the real Manos after a brand new day, and that's when I had stopped reading Spider-Man after reading Spider-Man pretty much my entire life. So those of you who've been watching my videos, uh, for the most part, uh, might be surprised that I am a pretty long-time Spider-Man fan. So uh, after the uh, brand new day thing hit, I decided to just weed off uh, Spider-Man for the time being, and, and just to enjoy all those awesome DC books. <laughs> I was a fool. Well, I was considering maybe getting back into Spider-Man here and there. I mean, there were some tempting storylines. Spider-Island looks really cool, incidentally, and I may still pick that up sometime in the future. Uh, and uh, Dan Slott, I was aware, was a big Spider-Man fan. I did enjoy his work previously on, previously on She-Hulk. By the way, if you dig his work on uh, Superior Spider-Man, I highly recommend checking out his work in uh, She-Hulk. He did actually a fantastic run of that character, uh, which I think is the best run of that character. Uh, second on only to that is Peter David's uh, take, which didn't really get to be completed. Uh, the book was canceled uh, before he really got going on it, which is unfortunate. Well, that is a, another story completely. I want to discuss from an outside vantage point what I think is happening in the Superior Spider-Man book and where Dan Slott is going. I only bring up this video because I've been... I haven't been reading the book, but I've been reading and listening to a lot of reviews about the book. I've been listening to interviews and I've also, you know, checking out previews about, you know, what's coming up. I, I've kept up to date with the book for the most part. And I have a small theory. I'm not sure if this is even correct. I, I just feel like maybe I should throw this out there. But this is where I think Dan Slott is going. What's What's going on, I think, is an expanded version of the Born Again scenario. And I call it that because I feel like this has been a story that's been done in superhero comics for, jeez, 20, 25 years now. Uh, somewhat modeled on the Frank Miller uh, Daredevil story, uh, Born Again, where Frank Miller, in case you haven't read it, uh, I won't spoil much for it, but what he does with Daredevil is he pretty much destroys Daredevil's life and uh, rebuilds it into like uh, a more leaner, meaner uh, version. Now, uh, a few years after that, the uh, the Superman writers did kind of a riff on this. Uh, I don't know if they were influenced by Born Again. But it, it does certainly kind of feel like it. And what they did was they killed Superman off and had him be dead for a while and replaced by some other characters. And when they brought him back, they brought him back uh, in a more streamlined version and kind of at the same time trying to get people to appreciate what was so cool about him. And then we get him back online and there you go. Now this proves so popular. Uh, a lot of titles did it. Uh, of course, Batman with the Nightfall storyline. Uh, Wonder Woman was next, uh, with her getting replaced by Artemis. Uh, that only lasted a few issues. It wasn't as big and expanding. Um, let's see, Green Lantern went in a more permanent direction uh, with the Emerald Twilight. Uh, there was even a Flash storyline where Wally was apparently replaced by his future self in a really cool dark red costume, by the way. And, of course, the soul was switched over to Marvel. Marvel did a few of these, too. Uh, most notably, or uh, most infamous, being the Spider-Man clone story. Because, I think, Spider-Man... Spider-Man has had a problem uh, at, at, at Marvel where I, I think for the last 20-some years, I think Marvel has had trouble figuring out what to do with the character. The character has been growing uh, ever since his creation in the 60s. And I think Marvel's afraid to take him uh, any further than his college years. Um, I, I understand the hesitance, but um, I, I think that's, that's what keeps halting and stopping 
uh, uh, the editors and, and creators uh, behind Spider-Man, and which I, I imagine is what the clone thing was all about, and what Brand New Day was all about, trying to get him back to a certain point. Um, and I, I think to some degree each one of these uh, failed, especially with the clone storyline that failed very, very badly. What I think Dan Slott is doing is I think he's pulling uh, Spider-Man back by by doing it this. He's he essentially taken him down. Uh, he's broken him down more than I think any other hero has been broken down. I mean, he's lost his fucking body. He's basically a ghost. He's probably been obliterated at this point, from what I understand. Um, broken down to nothing. Um, with his one of his worst enemies taking over his body, and actually, from what I can tell, doing a better job at being Spider-Man than he was, which is a double fuck you to Peter Parker. Um, so what we're going to be seeing is, this is my prediction, now that uh, I keep wanting to call him Spectacular Spider-Man, Superior Spider-Man, uh, Doc Ock's uh, Superior Spider-Man, I, I think it's going to continue uh, his reign, uh, but I, I think he's going to start burning bridges uh, one after another. Uh, I, I understand he's going to be doing that with the Avengers soon, uh, and I think he's going to be doing that over and over again with all his links. And I, what I think Dan Slott is trying to get to is, is where when Peter Parker comes back, and I'm not sure how he's going to be doing it, either he possesses a new body or he fights uh, Doc Ock for possession of his own body, uh, I'm not sure which way he's going to go about it. Uh, but once he regains his body and regains himself, he's going to find himself on the outside again. He's going to, uh, because ever since uh, Bendis, uh, and, and Civil War too to some extent, but ma mainly Bendis, uh, with Avengers and him joining the Avengers, he has kind of stepped away from being an outsider to being one of the more important heroes in the Marvel Universe. Uh, finally being accepted, like after all this time, I mean, Captain America has this wonderful speech about how he and all the other heroes are incredibly impressed by the fact that he's been able to do all of what he's done by himself with no help. Uh, and, you know, basically welcomed him with open arms uh, into, into the uh, more mainstream uh, Marvel heroes. Uh, so that's going to be taken away. Once he gets back, he's going to find that while he was gone, while Doc Ock has been on his body, he has just destroyed all of that. So once he returns, he is probably going to be not only not be an Avenger, he's probably not going to be uh, a welcomed hero. Uh, I mean, J. Jonah Jameson is not going to be his friend any, and ally anymore. He probably might even be wanted by the police. I wouldn't be surprised if he... Uh, becomes wanted for murder. And if it's Ock uh, managing his body, then he probably will have no like way to defend himself. Like his body did commit, you know, whatever murder is, uh, that um, Doc Ock will commit in his body. He can't go, well, you know, my worst enemy was controlling my mind, you have to understand and all that. You know, although to be honest, in the Marvel Universe, that should be a, a legitimate defense. So I, I think that's where Dan Slott is going. If, I, if I'm wrong, that's cool, but the more I think about this, I think that's where he's going with this. Uh, now, how long the story will be, I don't know. It seems to be very popular. It's a top ten book right now. I know a lot of longtime Spider-Man fans are really irritated by it, but yeah, it's a hit. So this might go on for a bit. Um, I would not be surprised if this went even after the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie came out. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this goes all the way to 30, 50 issues. Um, whatever plan he has, I think he has plenty of room uh, and plenty of leeway for Marvel right now. So, we'll see. Uh, I think that's all I have to say about this, so push the button, Lindsay.